A researcher in China says he worked in secret, without the knowledge of his university, his peers, or his government, to pull off a scientific first that has the potential to alter the human gene pool. He Jiankui says he helped create the world's first genetically edited babies. He claims they're resistant to HIV. Not that he's released any data to prove it. His announcement came with a slick YouTube video, not a journal where other scientists could check his work. Two beautiful little Chinese girls named Lulu and Lala came crying into the world as healthy as any other babies a few weeks ago. The publicity blitz seemed time to come just before his talk today in Hong Kong at the Human Genome Editing Summit, where he blamed a leak. Uh, first, I must apologize that this result leaked unexpected. He was hardly known in the scientific community until this week. He's 34. He's previously authored a study on the gene editing technique CRISPR, but hasn't published anything major. Still, he drew a crowd of journalists and bioethicists who've been debating the risks of gene-edited humans for years. The thing was that it was sur sur surreal in the sense that we're coming here exactly to debate these kinds of questions, when no one was thinking that there actually are two babies in the world who have had their embryos genetically edited. Robert Klitzman runs the bioethics program at Columbia University. I was shocked because this is so beyond the pale of what scientists are doing or considering acceptable to do. This is completely immoral. There has been consensus among leading countries, including China, that you should not be taking edited embryos and implanting them in women to have children at this point because we just do not know the risks and the risks could be severe. Our DNA consists of three billion letters. So gene editing is when we take some of the letters in the sequence of three billion letters and we change them. We take out some that can lead to a increased risk of disease, for instance. CRISPR is a technology that uses molecules to find certain sequences of letters and to remove them. So we can go in with sort of molecular scissors and clip out part of a gene that's no good. He says his work doesn't come close to creating a designer baby. Gene surgery is and should remain a technology for healing, enhancing IQ or selecting higher or eye color is not what a loving purple does. That should be banned. He claims that his advancement may have prevented the twin's father from passing on his HIV and a life of stigma. But there are other ways to prevent this kind of transmission. And scientists have no idea what side effects might arise from disabling the gene that He targeted. It's like predicting the weather. We can barely predict the weather 24 hours from now in New York City or anywhere in the world. So we're trying to make predictions now for an embryo of what diseases it's going to have 80 years from now. We're not very good at that kind of predictions. In altering the genes of an embryo, there are all kinds of unintended consequences. That's why the consensus in the scientific community up till now is that it's okay to experiment on altering the genes in embryos, but you should not at this point take the embryo and put it into a woman's body to create a child. China's government has pressured scientists like He to make advancements in CRISPR research to get ahead in the genetic equivalent of the space race. There is thought to be a lot of money in this. I would suspect that when it is found that someone is able to, in fact, have a way of altering the genes of a child and have a healthy child, that they will try to patent that and try to earn hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, if they're able to get rid of uh, major diseases, they may win a Nobel Prize. China allows scientists to edit human embryos for research, but only for up to 14 days after fertilization. He's current employer, the Southern University of Science and Technology, says he's been on unpaid leave since February, and that it had no knowledge of He's work, which it considers a serious violation of academic norms. It's now investigating. So is the institution where he did his postdoc, Rice University, which is looking closer at the role of one of its professors, who frequently collaborated with He and defended him, saying the families understood the risks. There is still no proof of He's success, or even if the twins exist. But if it's a hoax, it may only encourage the real thing. 
He's opened up Pandora's box in many ways. Uh, I think that he has suggested that this is possible and that there may now be other scientists who say, well, I'm gonna try it too. 